Welcome to Sal's Classic Bodybuilding Archives. Today, we take a look at Muscle Mag International from January 1983. The Dennis Tinarino Seminar held at Vic Tanny Nautilus Gym in Toronto, Canada. What kind of foods do you eat? When I first started training, I would eat anything my mother baked for me, which often included spaghetti and meatballs, etc. The diet was fairly well rounded though, and I continued to eat this way until I was about 28. I then started to retain subcutaneous fat around my waist and lower back, so I began to watch my diet more. I began taking in a lot more protein, but this didn't seem to help me much at all. I found myself taking in between 500 to 600 grams of protein per day. Prior to last year's Mr. Olympia, I was having 15 eggs, a chicken or two, two pounds of fish, and I was only taking 30 grams of carbohydrates per day. I stayed on and off this diet for four months while I took part in the various Grand Prix events. I really felt bad on this diet though and I could hardly think straight. This was because of the restricted and low carbohydrate diet I was following. I knew deep down that something was wrong, so I sat down to evaluate myself. I knew that my only goal was to win the Mr. Olympia, so I decided this year to train solely for it, totally bypassing all the other Grand Prix. Arnold was the greatest bodybuilder of all time, and he never trained for more than one contest a year. For 15 years, I kept a training log of workouts on a weekly and monthly basis, so I reasoned that my two major problems were a diet too low in calories and carbohydrates and overtraining. I did some reading on nutrition and decided that the best diet to follow was the type of diet the Weight Watchers followed. They don't restrict any one item from their diets and the food is always healthy and nutritious. I cut down on my red meat intake and discovered a feeling of well-being almost immediately. I get my main supply of protein from chicken, veal, turkey, fish, and a few eggs. The rest is a more rounded and complete line of foods. How many sets per body part is best? I personally like to do about 12 sets per body part, but I guess the average is somewhere between 8 and 15. Can you describe a typical day's eating throughout most of the year? Okay, my diet doesn't change all that much. For breakfast, I have four to six eggs, two slices of toast, some fruit and coffee. My second meal, which is my biggest meal of the day, consists of salad, fruit, a baked potato, and maybe some rice. My next meal will be some turkey breasts, celery, and some bread. If I feel hungry, I'll have a fourth meal, comprising of some protein, carbohydrates, and fats, etc. How many calories per day do you consume? I take in 3,500 calories each day. That sounds high when you read about the very, very low amount of calories that Casey Viator and Mike Menser are supposed to be having. Well, I would never go on to such a drastic diet like that. There's no reason for it. I may cut down a little bit before a contest, but not that much. Do you restrict yourself at all by not having a beer or ice cream? No, I don't restrict myself. For you can have the occasional drink or ice cream, it won't harm your body as long as you don't go overboard and do it all the time. If I got drunk every night, I wouldn't be able to get up and train. Have you ever trained at Vince Gironda's gym? And what do you think about his training methods? Yes, I have trained at Vince Gironda's gym. I trained there prior to the 1976 Professional Mr. Universe, and I learned more from him than perhaps anyone else in the world, with the possible exception of Bill Pearl. Tom Samsomi and Joe Abanda were the first bodybuilders to help me, but since then, Vince Gironda and Bill Pearl have helped me more than any other bodybuilders. 
I don't think that Vince has been given the true credit he deserves for his contribution to bodybuilding. Crunches, leg raises, supersets, and high intensity training all came from Vince. Does squatting make your hips and buttocks grow too large? If you have the tendency to grow large hips and buttocks, then there's not much you can do about it. I don't feel squats will make any difference. You just have to do squats if you want to realize your full potential. There's no other way. I've tried doing leg presses and sissy squats, and they just don't stand up to squats. Most all top bodybuilders do squats in their training. Do you eat anything for energy before your workout? Fruit is the best thing for energy. So usually, about a half hour before training, I'll have some fruit and maybe some raisins or fruit juice. Do you include running in your training? I don't run now, although I used to run four and a half miles a day. I found that I was becoming too overdrawn. I find I can get all my contest muscularity from dieting. I don't feel that bodybuilders should run more than about a mile if they still want to gain size from their workouts. You are famous for having fantastic shoulders. Are they genetic? Well, my shoulders are most definitely not genetic. I had the most pathetic shoulder development when I first started training and I wish I had a photo to show you. I didn't have an ounce of muscle on my shoulders and in fact you could even see my bones protruding. I was obsessed by big shoulders when I first started out, so I went around every gym in Brooklyn asking all the top guys what they did for their shoulders. I came away with the same answer every time. Presses, presses, and more presses. Soon, I found I could do sets of 6 reps with 250 pounds on the standing press off racks and my shoulders improved tremendously. So, if you want to make your shoulders bigger, do plenty of heavy presses. Press behind the neck and dumbbell presses. These are the big ones, so forget those lateral raises with 15 pound dumbbells. You gotta get the size first, and that means heavy basic compound exercises, done for low reps and good style. That concludes just about all of the major questions thrown at Dennis that day. And all that remained were a few thankful and kind words from Ken Wheeler, who said he hoped Dennis would come back soon. Maybe after he wins the Mr. Olympia. Well, thank you for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed today's read. Please leave a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe. And until next time, keep training.